Welcome. Suppose a chemist is doing an experiment and she's measuring the pH of some solution as it sits there over time. Apparently it gets more acidic or something. So that means she's conducting some experiment. So, you know, I've drawn a little graph here. So maybe at the time, uh, 10 minutes, uh, she finds the pH level is like 6.5 or something. And at 15 minutes, she finds it's a little bit higher. No, I'm making up some numbers. It doesn't matter. At 20 minutes, she might find some other value. Uh, she got interrupted with a phone call, so at 27 minutes she then finds some other value, and so on. So she plots the acidity of the solution over time. And she might get a scatter plot like this. And it looks like this data is actually increasing, maybe in a nice linear way. And you know, this is often the case that you might say, all right, we know there's you know, experimental error and human error and so forth going on here, so maybe this data is actually trying to follow a particular line, some line of best fit. Um, so maybe there's some line here, that is basically what the data is trying to follow. The question is, can we actually figure out the equation of that line? Well, how do you find the line of best fit? So let me go through that. There's a standard method out there. So it's, it's due to um, Carl Friedrich Gauss in the, in the 1800s, as he's actually doing some astronomical observations. Um, but here goes. Here's some data and want to try to fit a straight line fit to that graph as well. So if you want a straight line and try to figure out how to best fit the data, one technique, of course, is just to eyeball it, just get a, a ruler and just you know see what you can draw in and then you know figure out the slope of the line you drew and all that sort of stuff. Or then you do a more mathematical process. Now the question is, best fit, we need to pin down what we mean by that. Now if you're a geometry student, you might say, okay, I want to choose some blue line like this and somehow that's closest to all the points. And the way you measure distance in geometry is always do you know little line segments at 90 degrees to the line. And you might think, you know, all right, I want a line that somehow, if I add up all these distances, gives me the, the least total error. If I add up all these little deviations from that blue line, I get the line with the least sum of red distances I've drawn. That makes sense geometrically. However, if you think about what's really going on here for the scientists, that's not quite making sense. Each data point is not going to be a sort of a diagonal distance from the line because this scientist knew, for example, she was measuring the temperature at 15 minutes. She has complete control on these numbers. What she doesn't have control over is what the pH is going to be that she measures. So actually, what's appropriate for, way to measure distance of deviation of data points from a line in this case is the deviation of the pH from that line. That is the vertical distances from the line, which is a little anti-intuitive if you think about it at first, because from geometry I want to go the shortest distance of the line is always 90 degrees. So maybe the thing to do is to find a blue line then since it's philosophically appropriate for what a scientist actually is doing, she knows the times for sure. These x values or t values are fixed. It's the y values, the pH values in this case, that are not. The deviation happens in the pH. So let's figure out a blue line that gives a total sum of these green vertical distances at a minimum. That means for each data point, and this has some initial x value and y value, I have to find a line so that the y value along the line compared to the y value of the actual data the difference, differences of those distances between those two values is at a minimum if I add them all up. Now, how do you measure distances in mathematics? Well, that's absolute value. So I want to get the least sum of distances of the form, which would be like my first data value, I should call it P, what, P or something for pH, but I'll call it Y. My actual first data value by, by the Y value for the line, plus the distance of the second data value from the Y value from the line for that second one, first one, second one, and so on. So I want to minimize a sum of absolute values. That would be, if I can find the line that gives the smallest possible sum of deviations, that would be my line of best fit. Brilliant. Except, mathematics with absolute values is a horror to work with. Solving absolute value problems is a nightmare. For example, if I said to you solve x minus x minus 2 absolute values of minus uh, x minus 4 absolute value of that equals 7, good luck to you. There might be some x values that do that, but uh, ugh, absolute values is just a nightmare. Certainly back in the time of Gauss, who's the guy that first doing this, he did not want to work with absolute values. So the question is, is another way to measure distances that, of these sort of vertical deviations, um, which are positive numbers, uh, without resorting to absolute values? So he said, okay, another way to turn differences and to make sure that absolute values all the time is, is positive values all the time is don't work with absolute value but work with squares. Squaring a value, sorry I'm having trouble with my pen, squaring values would actually give um, another sum of positive deviations so let's work with a line of best fit that gives me the minimum sum of deviations squared. 
Not quite as you know realistic as absolute value squared, but at least it gives us a very good measure. And certainly, if this sum turns out to be zero, that is, there are no deviations, that means each individual term, is, if the, the sum of the deviations is zero, the only way a sum of positive numbers can be adding up to zero is each individual number is zero, then y1 and the line would have to be a perfect match together. y1 minus the y value on the line is zero, that is, that would be the line that's absolutely fitting the data perfectly. So working with squares is actually doing the right thing for us. All right, now, explain, having explained the phil phil uh, philosophy of what I'm doing, why people go with least squares rather than least absolute values, let's go ahead and actually figure out how to do this. Let me draw some actual data, and I will show you how to work out the line of least squares. It's actually not as bad as you think it might be. So. Here's some graph again. Let me um, give a tiny example. Suppose I've got measuring x values and y values. That when x was 1, I did an experiment, and it turned out I measured x was y had a value of 2. And when x was 2, you know, maybe a 2-minute mark, y was a value 5. And at 6-minute mark, y was a value 8 or something. That is, I've got some data. Uh, 1, it's 2. At 2, it's 5. And at 6, it's 8 or something. 5 and 8, doesn't really matter. All right, so my job is to somehow find a line of best fit through that data. Doesn't look very hopeful right now. All right, I'm going to make one little assumption, uh, just to make my math easier. And it turns out the assumption is true, and I can explain why it's true later on in the video. But it seems intuitively right that somehow that a line that's going to best fit the data should go through the most average point for my data. For example, if I look at this, the average of the x values, which people do it by x bar, at least in statistics, is 1 plus 2 plus 6, that's 9, divided by 3, divided by 6, that's 3. So the average x value is 3, and the average y value is uh, 2 plus 6, that's 15, divided by 3 is 5. So in some sense, the most average point for this data is the point 3, 5. So somehow, I'm going to assume that the line of best point, if it's going to really truly represent the data, should go through the most average point. Now, given that, that's, I admit that's an assumption, but it feels kind of right, it's now pretty easy to work out the line of best fit by the least squares method. For example, I don't know the slope. It's the slope of the line is the only thing I need to figure out now, because once I've got the slope and I know a point that I want it to go through, I can say the equation of the line is going to be y minus 5 over x minus 3 is that slope. Well, that is the equation of the line is y minus 5 is whatever the slope is, x minus 3. That is, there's the equation of the line I'm seeking and want to know which value of m gives the best best possible uh, deviation. All right, here goes. Uh, let me now work out what the deviation is going to be if sort of I'm in this abstract world right now. So here are my x values. Here are the uh, y values, uh, y on the line, and it's my actual y values. Ooh, we will count draw straight. All right, when x is 1, the actual y value is 2. And according to this formula, y would be, oh, oops, let me rewrite this. y is m x minus 3 plus 5. That's probably a better way. So when x is 1, this would be negative 2m plus 5. The y value along the line is 5 minus 2m. When x is 2, the actual y value is 5. And the y value according to the line would be, uh, put in x equals 2, negative 1, it's 5 minus m. And when x is 6, the actual y value is 8, and when x is 6, this would be a three, 5 plus 3m. So whatever line I'm coming up with, the slope m, I know here are the actual data values for the y, 2, 5, and 8, and the actual data values of the line would be 5 minus 2m, 5 minus m, and 5 plus 3m. So I want to choose a value of m that minimizes this, these deviations, how far off the y values on the line are from the actual y values. So we want to minimize Okay, need space, goodbye graph. Uh, minimize the sum of these deviations. And since we don't want to work with absolute values, we'll work with the difference squared. 5 minus 2m minus 2 squared. All right, so I'll have uh, 3 minus 2m squared is the first deviation. Plus 5 minus m, take away 5. That's a difference of negative m, but negative m squared is m squared. And 5 plus 3m minus 8. That's the difference of um, 3m minus 3 and squared. There's the sum of my deviations squared. I, mean, I want to minimize this formula. 
All right, I'm going to um, just cheat a little bit. I've actually done this algebra already. I can expand all these, and I can see that this is going to be. Um, you might want to just check me because you, know, you probably know me in arithmetic by now. 14m squared minus 30m plus 18. So I want to find an m value which makes this the smaller as it can be. That is, I want the smallest deviation of these sums, sums of deviation squared. All right, well, this is just a little parabola. I can see it's m squared. Uh, it's an upward facing parabola. Let me just get some interesting x val m values out of this. So let's write this as 14m minus 30 plus 18. So if I just actually sketch this graph of m values, I can see it's going to be, oops, I need my pen. Very slow with my pen today. Uh, when m is 0, this is a quadratic with value 18. And when this part is 0, uh, that is when m is 30 fourteenths, it also has value 18. It's an upward facing u with two symmetrical points. So I know the minimum is going to occur halfway between 0 and 30 fourteenths, that's 15 fourteenths. The minimum value of m is 15 fourteenths. Bingo. There is the line, there's the slope of the line that's going to give me the least sum of deviations squared. That is, I now know the equation of my line that best fits the data is, let's do it in bold blue, y minus 5 is 15 fourteenths x minus 3. Bingo. And in just to recapitulate what we did, 3, 5 was the most average point for the data. And then all I did is I actually worked out, OK, from sort of a slightly abstract version of the line, did a table of actual y values, of predicted y values according to the line, and literally wrote out a formula for the sum of deviations squared. It will turn out for three data points, I had a sum of three terms. For four data points, I had a sum of four terms. But they're only sums of things squared. It will always reduce to a quadratic in the end. The fact that it's a quadratic means it's very easy to find where the minimum occurs. This is actually very easy to do in practice. You can actually find this by finding the minimum value of a simple quadratic in M. And that's it. That is the equation of the line of least fit, of, of best fit. Least fit is bad. All right, just to be give you the icky algebra that appears in all the books. In general, here it is. And you can prove this in exactly the same way. It's actually not hard to do. It's just going to be tedious. That if the data values are x1, x2, x3, da, 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 up to xn, and the y values are y1, y2, y3, up to yn, then the line of best fit is going to be y minus y bar equals something that people like to call, because it comes up a lot in statistics, SXY, SXX, these variances and covariances, X minus X bar. Where, let me explain my terms, X bar is just the average of the X values, just like we did before. Y bar is the average of the Y values, just like we did before. And the strange SXX business is just, let me make sure I get it right, um, x1 minus x bar squared plus x2 minus x bar squared. So this is all like the deviations from the mean, all divided by n minus 1. Now this is a little weird. Some authors actually divide by n. There's not consistency here. And sxy is sort of like a mixture of doing the same thing for the y's and the x's together. x1 minus x bar, y1 minus times y1 minus y bar, plus x2 minus x bar, y2 minus y bar, and so on, all divided by n minus 1. Ugh. Looks horrible, looks really scary, looks miserable. But if you want to actually work out the abstract algebra, it's actually not that bad, and it turns out to be this formula. You might want to try that. All right, I did start off with the assumption that you think the line of best fit that's going to best fit the data should go through the most average point. The way most people prove this line of best fit um, formula is through calculus. And from calculus, it becomes pretty clear that you don't have to make that assumption and that the line you get is actually the same line we just got here circled in blue and one can check that this line is obviously going through the point x bar y bar therefore it does uh, do the work uh, that's that's the most abstract proof um, using calculus in fact that's the real reason why gauss did not want to use absolute values you can't take the derivative of an absolute value very easily it's quite annoying so if you want to use calculus or use something that's actually differentiable going with squares is a better way of turning numbers into positive ones and be able to use the techniques of calculus all right, that's it. That's the line of uh, best fit via the least squares method. The next question, of course, is this, of course, to ask 
is how can you measure how good a fit that really is? And then we get to something called the correlation coefficient, and that's bundles of fun. All right, another time though. Thanks very much.